can this really replace this? Supposedly, it flies like a real bird, and I should forget about drones and experience flight like never before. Bold claims from this indie tech, let's see if it can truly soar, and find out if the locals will accept him as one of their own. No, get out of there. Get out of there. Is it a plane? Is it a bird? It's a bird-shaped drone called the Metabird. And no, Mark Zuckerberg didn't make it. It's just something I stumbled on and thought, I gotta try this. To be clear, this video is not sponsored in any way, and for that, I'm eternally grateful. We'll find out why later on. Now, when it comes to drones, let's just say I've done some things that would make MacGyver proud and maybe the FFA want to surveil me. From attaching a LoRa transceiver and creating my own data slayer cell tower to jerry-rigging a magnetic charger to facilitate air-to-air -air refuelings. But as a Floridian and having just endured the 2024 hurricane season, I got a new perspective on how impactful those natural disasters can be. From inaccessible roads to blackout spots to critical search and rescue, but amid the chaos, an unsung tech hero began to rise. According to a study published in Nature Medicine, approximately 9% of the global population, or 650 million people, cannot reach healthcare within one hour, even if they have access to motorized transport. Drones have the power to change that by bringing relief to them, but only if we push the boundaries of design and efficiency. So I thought, hold up, I live in Florida Hurricane Alley, I love reviewing new ambitious tech that's a little offbeat, a little indie, and maybe even a bit impractical. Well, Metabird checks all those boxes. So who better to kick the tires on alternative drone tech than the data slayer himself? Now, before folks fly into the comments section, let me be clear, this thing is not on par with current drone tech like DJI. Instead, it's a concept drone that may be an exciting step towards democratizing the skies. Imagine down the line a drone ecosystem powered by something as affordable and accessible as a Raspberry Pi. So it might not beat DJI today, but that doesn't mean it won't evolve into something revolutionary tomorrow. So I took a chance and ordered the drone. Pretty impressed it didn't even break three figures. And just about that time when I was telling Amelia that I'm pretty sure I got scammed, I saw this innocuous little package. The Metabird has arrived. Now I'm skeptical, but it has the evolutionary advantage. So I studied the directions. Let's talk about the weight difference first. So the Metabird is feather light compared to the DJI Mini, which weighs in at around 250 grams. The Metabird is in a completely different category. Its lightweight foam body is designed for agility and bird-like motion. And it's definitely not built to handle the rugged tasks of heavier drones. They say this thing can be flown indoors. My living room strongly disagrees. Now, let's break down the anatomy of this thing. The body is made entirely of foam, which keeps it light and crash resistant. Its wingspan is 33 centimeters with a length of 16 centimeters. Inside, it's powered by a custom developed 1.6 watt micro coreless motor. To keep things cool, it's equipped with an aluminum heat sink something you don't often see on devices this small. The motion itself comes from a patented gearbox and steering system, allowing for that unique flapping style. The battery is a 58 milliampere hour LiPo that weighs just 1.6 grams, and it charges in about 12 minutes, which is a nice touch if you're eager to get back in the air quickly. For connectivity, it uses Bluetooth 4.0 and has a range of up to 100 meters. Its top speed, 12 miles per hour. Not breaking any records, but it's enough to replicate the leisurely glide of a bird in flight. However, one of the biggest complaints about drones is the constant high-pitched buzzing sound they make during flight. It's disruptive and can be a real annoyance. To see if Meta's new ornithopter-style Metabird offers an improvement, I compared its sound levels to the more familiar DJI Mini in a decibel test. The results? The Metabird measured 75 decibels compared to the DJI Mini's 83. While the overall volume is only slightly reduced, I did notice that the Metabird's sound is less piercing in nature, 
a lower, more tolerable pitch compared to the sharper hum of the DJI. It's not silent by any means, but it's a noticeable step toward quieter drone technology. The MetaBird's wings are crafted from a blend of carbon fiber and liquid crystal polymers, materials known for their exceptional strength and flexibility. This combination allows the wings to flex and recover from impacts without losing their shape or functionality. Adding to its resilience, the body is made from indestructible foam, which absorbs shocks and protects the drone from falls and collisions. Now you might think foam is just a prototyping material, but it's more than that. Even Zipline, the groundbreaking drone company with a proven track record of delivering life-saving medical supplies to remote areas, relies on foam for its lightweight yet incredibly durable properties. This thoughtful combination of materials makes the MetaBird remarkably robust, able to handle mishaps and obstacles that might sideline other drones. And I know this firsthand. I managed to get it stuck in a tree where it endured some serious abuse from other birds, yet it came down intact and flight-worthy, ready to take off again without a hitch. It's hard to envision this thing carrying a payload, but I mean, big birds seem to be able to do it. So meet Zucky. Let's talk about how this thing works and what makes it special. Apparently the MetaBird is all about imitating the movements of a swallow. It's a simple question of weight ratios. A five ounce bird could not carry a one pound coconut. Well, it doesn't matter. And there's a good reason for that. In robotics, mimicking nature is called biomimicry, and it has often proven to be more efficient than purely human designs. Just look at Spot from Boston Dynamics. Evolutionary designs like these often have a leg up on traditional rigid mechanics. Now, most drones we're used to have propellers that lift them helicopter style, but this? Zucky flaps its wings. It's essentially an ornithopter, a design inspired by how birds actually fly. And yes, I'm already afraid of crashing this thing and not being able to steer it properly. The controls are a bit different from your average drone. Instead of adjusting the propellers or pitch angles, you're working with a system that coordinates wing flaps and gliding patterns. When it comes to piloting the MetaBird, you'll need to download the companion app called the Flying App on iOS and just Flying App on Android. The app gives you a couple of ways to steer. One option uses your device's accelerometer, letting you tilt your phone to control the bird's movement. It's a neat concept, but I didn't feel confident in the reaction times for precise control. Instead, I opted for the one finger control mode. This setup provides a throttle on the Y axis to adjust flapping speed and a rudder on the X axis for steering. It was pretty reliable and intuitive. And if you lift your finger off the controls, Zucky stops flapping and glides smoothly until you're ready to resume. The app's design is simple yet effective, giving you the flexibility to experiment with different flying techniques and get the most out of your MetaBird experience. Charging it is simple though. You plug it in and in about 12 minutes, Zucky's ready to soar again. And worth mentioning, this thing can glide just like a real bird. So once those wings stop flapping, Zucky doesn't just drop, it actually coasts through the air just like a real bird. So the MetaBird, so the MetaBird has these very high tech ballasts, which you can slide along the wing to help it fly more straight but I'm still curious how well this thing can actually fly. Before we take this guy on its maiden voyage, I wanna linger for a second on the real world applications of emerging drone tech. Back in 2018, during the Thai cave rescue, I had a close friend who was from Bangkok and we watched the events unfold with bated breath, following every update, every breakthrough, every setback. And I'll never forget this peculiar revelation. 
We can send people to the moon and robots to Mars, yet rescuing a group of kids from a cave was somehow proving impossible. So on top of the unease, I also felt helpless. Sure, we were fortunate to witness a global effort, countries and volunteers pulling their expertise for a pretty miraculous outcome, but that outcome was never guaranteed, and it reminded me of a truth we often overlook. Disaster relief isn't always about impossible feats. So much of it boils down to a simple logistics problem, finding the right tools, the right solutions at the right time. Fast forward to the 2024 hurricane season here in Florida, and that feeling of helplessness hit all over again. The Atlantic hurricane season devastated Florida with almost 400 fatalities and nearly $200 billion in damages. Hurricanes Helene and Milton were the most destructive, with Milton alone causing about $170 billion in losses, 24 deaths, and widespread destruction from storm surges, rain, and tornadoes. Over 2.3 million people lost power, and debris still covers communities. Emergency declarations highlight one of the most catastrophic seasons on record. Here's where it gets interesting though. Organizations like Drone Responders of Miami have shown us just how powerful drones can be in disaster relief. Take rapid assessment, for example. Drones equipped with high-resolution cameras can survey massive disaster areas in minutes. They pinpoint damage to homes, roads, and infrastructure, so response teams can focus their efforts where they're needed most, and fast. Then there's search and rescue. With thermal imaging, drones can spot survivors trapped under debris or isolated in floodwaters. It doesn't matter if it's pitch black or a chaotic scene, they can see what we can't. And it doesn't stop there. Aerial footage captured by drones is a game changer for damage assessment. It gives agencies and insurers a clear view of what's been destroyed so the recovery process can start that much sooner. Drones are even taking on dangerous tasks like infrastructure inspection. Whether it's power lines or bridges or buildings, they can safely fly in to identify hazards, keeping human crews out of harm's way. And in blackout zones where communication is critical, drones step up as relays. They create temporary networks, reconnecting families, first responders, and anyone cut off in the chaos. As drones evolve, their role in disaster relief will only grow. Imagine drones capable of flying autonomously into the most dangerous zones, delivering life-saving supplies, or carrying advanced medical equipment. With better battery life, increased payloads, AI-driven navigation, and even the capability to operate in biohazard zones, drones are rapidly becoming an indispensable tool in humanity's fight against nature's most daunting challenges. And that brings me to the meta bird. Sure, it's not about to dethrone the big players like DGI, but it's part of a much bigger picture. Every new design, no matter how quirky or ambitious, pushes us closer to solving real-world problems. From Hurricane Alley in Florida to the most remote corners of the globe, the future of humanitarian tech begins with ideas as bold as this little bird. Okay, so enough theory. Let's take this thing into the field and see how well it performs. First off, you'll want a wide open space, preferably free of trees. My first spot seemed perfect until I got it stuck in a tree. Making friends. Thankfully, a group of kids lent me their soccer ball to knock it loose. But the real drama came from the local bird population. They didn't take too kindly to Zucky invading their territory. The crows hate this thing. Look at it. He was picking at it. He was chasing them down. They flew over, dive bombed, and even pecked at it. Maybe they were protecting a nest or maybe they just wanted to send a message to their new AI overlord. It does make you wonder, is this more evidence that birds aren't real? I'll let you decide. Once I found a truly open area, I got a better sense of its capabilities. The meta bird can gain altitude and circle for quite some time, but steering and maintaining control is a learning curve. I managed to get it flying for several minutes before it drifted out of range and glided back down to the ground. I kept thinking about upgrades, swapping out the Bluetooth 4 for something with longer range, like a LoRa radio, 
or attaching a mini FPV camera to see things from the MetaBird's perspective, but I guess those are going to be projects for another day. Overall, the MetaBird is a fun piece of tech, perfect for kids, tinkerers, or anyone who enjoys experimenting with gadgets. It's got that quirky charm like something you'd have found out of Sharper Image back in the day. MetaBird won't replace disaster response drones we have today, but what it does do is showcase the potential for new designs and ideas to add value. Each new approach to drone technology, like MetaBird, brings us closer to breakthroughs that could save lives, whether through better battery life, autonomous navigation, or carrying essential supplies to areas where no one else can reach, because sometimes we all need a little help from above. Check out the next killer tech video right here.